Welcome to your Flame Fundamentals training. The final editorial mode you'll learn about is sliding. This is when you take a segment and physically slide it along the sequence to change its position. So you'll cover the basics of sliding, sliding with the trim view, numerical sliding, interactive sliding, and we'll briefly discuss slide cuts and slide keyframes. So the typical case for sliding a segment is when you want to move the segment along the sequence but maintain the connectivity of the corresponding segments. This is different to dragging the segment in SELECT mode where you could grab a segment and move it down the sequence. You can see the segment has no connectivity to its corresponding segments and you can land up with gaps in the sequence. When you switch to the slide mode using the editorial mode pull down menu and start moving the selected segment, you can see how the surrounding segments will remain connected and they will automatically trim themselves to keep the integrity of the edit. This works if the corresponding segments have enough head and tail frames to perform the slide. So no gaps in the sequence. You can also use the trim view when in slide mode. Just switch to the trim view using the view mode pull down menu or double click on the segment. You get the same viewing configuration as the slip mode where the center two viewers show the first and last frame of the selected segment. The viewer on the far left is the outgoing frame of the previous segment and the viewer on the far right is the incoming frame of the next segment. This gives you context of your selected segment and the surrounding segments as you perform the slide. You can slide the segment directly in the sequence or you can click and drag in the trim view to perform the slide. Notice how the first and last frame of the sliding segment do not change. All you are doing is changing the segment's starting frame in the sequence. Now you do need to consider ripple when sliding segments. With ripple on, only the outgoing length of the previous segment is affected. Every other segment afterwards gets pushed down. So the sequence either gets longer or shorter. If ripple is off, then both the outgoing segment and incoming segment will adjust to accommodate the slide. You can navigate segments with the trim view by selecting them and to exit the trim view, just change to a different player or click on the positioner or time bar below the sequence. When working with the trim view and slide mode, you can gesturally slide the segment but you can also adjust the slide numerically. You can use the buttons to slide forward and back by one or five frames. And you can also enter in a frame number on your keyboard. If you have a full size keyboard with a number pad, just type plus 10 using the number pad and pressing enter will slide the segment forward by 10 frames. If your keyboard does not have a number pad, hold control option and double click on the segment for the trim calculator. You can type minus 10 and pressing enter will slide the segment back by 10 frames. To slide a segment during playback, you can press the play button to loop the segment repeatedly. During playback, you use the comma and full stop keystrokes to slide the segment by one frame in either direction. The next time the segment loops, you'll be able to review it with the new slide offset. Stopping playback will return to the trim view. Finally, there are two other slide modes that you may find useful. Looking at the editorial mode pull down menu, you have slide cuts. I personally don't use this very often, but its function is the inverse of slip. For example, if you click and slide a segment, the source footage locks to the sequence's timecode and does not move with the slide. 
so by sliding the segment earlier in the sequence, also starts the source footage earlier in the segment. This takes time to get your head around, but once you do, it can be helpful in certain situations. The last slide mode is Slide Keyframes. This is a very useful slide mode, as it works with all Timeline Effects keyframes, except for Batch Effects. For example, if you have keyframed animation in a Timeline Effects, you can slide the keyframes to start the effect sooner or later, without having to go into an animation editor to make any changes. This should be very useful to you when you start digging into Timeline Effects. Please move on to the next video, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Flame Learning channel. Thanks for watching.